Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 809th Rome Total War Brother game that I've put onto YouTube. During this battle, you're going to see a sad tale of isolation and what can happen, and you're going to see an old school, old fashioned surge attack. Should be an interesting one for you to watch. As you can see, this is fought on the Germanic forest map with the big open plains, as we've talked about before, where you can fight out in the open if you like. Or you can hide your troops in the woods and spring those nasty ambushes onto enemy troops. And of course, if you bring barbarian uh, factions, then you've got the woods bonus and you've got the winter bonus as well, which of course enhances their specifications. So this map's got everything, I think. It's a really good map. Okay, our first teammate is Brotherhood member Mad King, who's bought the Carthage faction. Now get ready for this. Mad King has got 20, yes, 20 Sacred Band Spearmen. No cavalry, no slingers, 20 Sacred Band Spearmen. And he's just got gold shield, gold attack on them. Okay, now there's a reason why he's got 20 Sacred Band Spearmen. No cavalry, no, infant, uh, no uh, slingers. And you'll... Um, You'll see the reason for it a little bit later on when we see the enemy team. But there you are. That's quite a, a powerful army there. Okay, our next teammate, someone's called himself OTD Chimrazig, but is in fact Scorpion King SR. Now he's got nine infantry, six cavalry, and five archers. Okay, if you look at his general, the upgrade on his general unit there, you'll see he's got eight upgrades. Two experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack on his general there. But I think if I remember correctly, most of his infantry are just gold, yeah, just gold shield, gold attack on most of his infantry there. But he's really well upgraded his general there. Quick look at his archers there. And he's got gold shield, gold attack on his elite auxiliary archers there. Um, quick look at his cavalry. He usually brings, yeah, seven upgrades and experience stripe gold shield gold attack on his cavalry. Now remember Scorpion King has got no saved armies. He builds his armies for every individual battle. So um, it'll be interesting to see how well his army does here, but with only nine infantry. Is that enough for the modern day battlefield? Well, I guess we'll just see a bit later on. Okay, um, our next teammate is by the member Barkley Man. Now Barkley Man has got ten pikes, four archers, five cavalry, and one chariot unit. Okay. You have a look here, he's only got seven upgrades on his pikeman there. That's an experienced stripe, gold shield, gold attack. And just look at the length of those pikes that the enemy troops have got to fight down to kill the man on the other end. That's a no uh, no easy task, especially for Roman troops there. Okay, so that's his Selysid Pikeman. Let's have a quick look at the upgrades on his cavalry. And if you notice, he's got seven upgrades, an experienced stroke, gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry. Remember, we call these guys the tanks of the ancient world because they're armoured from head to toe and used properly, they can be battle winning troops. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how Barkley Man handles this army during the course of the battle. You don't see him bring Selysid very often. And there, of course, you've got the chariots there. Okay, remember he's got massive attack specifications and a huge fear factor, taking morale away from enemy troops, destabilizing them, making them more susceptible to routing. But of course, if these chariots um, are routed, they run amok, and then they kill both friend and foe alike. So they become a menace to both friend and foe, and they seem to be stronger in a muck mode than in normal mode. And I'd just like to show you something. Do you notice anything unusual about these chariots at all? Have a good look. Can you see anything at all? Okay, you might notice that they've got no upgrades. You see, he's got no upgrades on those chariots at all. So it's just a basic chariot unit there with no upgrades. That's quite unusual to see. So it'd be interesting to see how well Barkley Man does with his Seleucid army. And his general there, he's got a silver shield legionnaire unit there with seven upgrades on. Experience stripe gold shield gold attack. Remember these silver shield legionnaires have got better defense than the pikemen. So that's why he's made that general unit... Um, that's why he's made that unit a general there. Okay, so as I say, it'd be interesting to see how well he used that army during the course of the battle. And our last teammate is myself. Spartan Commander has got a very old Roman army of 14 infantry and 6 cavalry. Okay, 14 infantry and 6 cavalry. So there's our team. It's got the potential to be a cracking battle. And I hope you enjoy it. And here is the other team. We have brother member TR, who's bought the Germania faction. Now he's got six archers, one screeching woman, six cavalry, three chosen axemen, three berserkers, and one knight raider unit. So he's certainly got a diverse uh, faction here. If you notice there, 
is his chosen archers. They've got long range, they can do a lot of damage, and they're so tough that when they run out of arrows, they make good light infantry. So he's got six of them, so he's brought a lot of firepower to this battle. And then he's got his gothic cavalry there. If you count the upgrades, one, two, three, and that's one, two. Yeah, he got eight upgrades there. Two experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack. Um, check out the specification of this gothic cavalry. Very underestimated cavalry. And with those upgrades on, they're quite tough there. So that's quite good. Good archers, good cavalry. Let's have a look at his infantry. You already know he's got night raiders there. Remember these guys are good infantry in their own right, but they bring a fear factor to enemy troops. Remember, any unit that brings a fear factor takes morale away from enemy troops, makes them more susceptible to rout him. And then he's got his uh, chosen axemen there. Remember, these have got the same morale as urban cohorts. Excellent morale. And those axes, as I say, are effective against armour. And they can cut wide swathes through heavily armoured troops like Roman infantry. Okay, and then we move on to the infamous berserkers with their effective against armour maces. Their two hit points, their excellent attacking specifications, and the massive fear factor they bring to the battlefield. Once again, taking morale away from enemy troops, destabilising them, and making them more susceptible to routing. And there you are, he's got his three berserker units there. And this is a good tactical move here by TR. Barbarian troops have got quite low morale. So to bring the screeching women that actually um, are morale, is, is a, a morale boosting unit, is a really good idea to keep the morale up of his Germanic army. So that's an interesting German army there, Germanic army there. It'll be interesting to see how well it does. Okay, uh, their next teammate is Brotherhood member Lando. Now Lando's got 11 infantry, 3 archers, 5 cavalry, and 1 armoured cavalry general. Okay, now if you notice there, if you look at his battle formation there, you'll see that he has got two eagle units, okay? Now remember, you bring eagle units to your Roman army, and they are morale-boosting units, okay? Remember, the more morale your army's got, the better they'll fight. So there you are, he's got two eagle units there. Now the reason he's bought those two eagle units is because his general is an armoured cavalry general. Old school, old fashioned here. And he can take that armoured cavalry general around the battlefield with his cavalry, giving the general morale bonus to his cavalry as they fight, knowing that he's got two morale boosting units left with his infantry there. It's giving them a lot of morale as well. So that's a good tactical move there by Lando. And it'll be interesting to see how well he does. As I say, um, there you are. You can see his armoured cavalry general there. Up to about 15, 16 years ago, we all used to bring this as our Roman um, cavalry general until most of us switched to infantry general. So this is genuinely old school, old fashioned from 16, 17 years ago. You don't see many people bringing an armoured cavalry general as their general uh, for a Roman army these days. So as I say, old school there. Okay, uh, their next teammate is RTW player Spitfire. Now, Spitfire's got 11 pikes, 3 archers, and 6 cavalry. Okay, uh, so it's 11 pikes, 3 archers, 6 cavalry. Look at the upgrades on his forward units of his battle formation, just gold shield, gold attack. These guys are the ones that's going to make first contact with the enemy, take the big casualties. If you move further back into his battle formation, you'll see the next line has got 7 upgrades on, an experienced stripe, gold shield, gold attack there. So he's got staggered upgrades through his battle formation, and just look at the length of those Macedonian pikes that our men have got a fight down. Now, he usually brings serious cavalry here. Let's have a look and see the upgrades on his companion oh my gosh eight upgrades two experience stripes gold shield gold attack now remember these companion cavalry are also called the winged horsemen can you see because of those feathers on their helmets look like wings so they're called the winged horsemen as well and these guys have got the biggest charge bonus in the game they've got a 10 charge bonus okay remember the charge bonus is the impact and penetration a unit can do most cavalry units have only got a six charge bonus in this game these guys got a 10 charge bonus okay plus with those eight upgrades that he's put on those units as well make no mistake this is tough really tough cavalry and uh, with that 10 charge bonus imagine the damage that it does when it hits enemy troops there so i think that's a pretty well put together spitfire macedonian army there and uh, their last teammate is unusually another macedonian army here brotherhood member mars here now he's got 12 pikes two archers and five cavalry very, very unusual to see two Macedonian armies in one team there. So you can imagine the pike damage that they can do. Of course, most of his army are hiding in the woods there. You can only see his general. 
there. So as I say, very unusual to see two Macedonian armies in one team. As I say, you could see now why Mad King has bought 20 units of Sacred Band Spearmen. Remember those Carthage uh, Spearmen f uh, punch above their weight when it comes to the big 121-man units. This should be a cracking battle for you to watch. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have a word about Scorpion King SR. We know he's one of the most aggressive attacking players in the game, okay, especially when it comes to skirmishing. And he's up against another uh, very attacking and aggressive player in a Brotherhood member, Lando. So these two here could actually kick the battle off facing each other. But as I say, this is a, a story, a very sad story of isolation and its aftermath. And you're going to see an old-fashioned, old-school surge attack in this battle as well. Notice there that Lando's got his uh, fast-moving armor, cavalry general, all ready to start right at the beginning of the battle there. I say it should be a good one for you to watch. Okay, at this very, very early stage of the battle here, you'll see that um, Scorpion King there is facing Lando, as we looked at earlier. But you'll see that Scorpion King's moved his archers and his cavalry over here on the far right flank there. Okay, as I say, Scorpion King, very aggressive, very attacking, and very good skirmisher as well. Okay, and what you'd like to do is probably target the Germanic um, faction with his archers. I remember, barbarian troops are very susceptible to archer damage. And over here, you'll see that um, Spitfire and Mars have kind of combined their uh, Macedonian armies there. As I say, very, very unusual to see two Macedonian um, armies in a team. And there where you can see Mars' cavalry coming out of the woods. And I think, yeah, he's just got gold shield, gold attack on his companion cavalry. But remember those companion cavalry, as we said earlier, have got a massive 10 charge bonus. That's the impact and penetration that a unit can do. Right, let's pause the game for a second here. Okay, so, to say, here you can see why Mad King has bought 20 Carthage Sacred Band Spearmen there is because we're up against two Macedonian armies. Okay, now remember that the Carthage Sacred Band Spearmen punch above their weight when it comes to the 121 man units. We know Carthage can beat Macedon if played um, properly there. So, um, as I say, that's why Mad King's bought 20 Sacred Band Spearmen there, as, as you can see, because we're up against two Macedonian armies. Meanwhile, over here on our far right flank, you'll see that uh, Scorpion King being the usual aggressive south there. He's got his archers in range of the enemy archers there. And uh, he's guarding his archers, of course, with his well-upgraded cavalry. He usually got very good upgrades on his cavalry. But as I say, over here, it's uh, a bit of an archer battle at the moment. There. As I say, um, Scorpion King, always very good at skirmishing there. And in this game, skirmishing can be very, very important, as we know. And there you are, that's his uh, elite archers there, facing off against the Germanic chosen archers. Okay. But uh, as I say, um, this battle is going to show you a very sad tale of isolation um, during the course of this battle and its aftermath. So um, that'll be interesting for you to see, I think. Right, let's pause the game for a second here. So as I say, here you can see Scorpion King's well-upgraded cavalry there looking after his archers. If we have a quick look, I think if I remember, if we have a quick look at his upgrades, he's used, yeah, you are up. Eight upgrades on his Praetorian Cavalry. Two experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack. So these cavalry, really good there. They're pretty good at just gold shield, gold attack. But you put a couple of stripes on them, and they're pretty tough. But over here, if you notice here, you'll see you've got TR's Gothic Cavalry. You've got Lando's Cavalry here as well. So there's a lot of enemy cavalry on this flank. Plus, um, they're matching... Scorpion King's archers, I think. In fact, I think, if I remember correctly, uh, TR's got more archers than Scorpion King. And then you can see the Macedonian general has brought his archers over as well. If you notice here, um, Scorpion King's infantry is a long way away from his archers and cavalry. You might just uh, might remember that as the battle unfolds there. His infantry quite a long way from his archers and cavalry. Okay, but as I say here, you can see... That uh, Lando's fast-moving armoured cavalry general here. I was waiting to see this in action. And he's probably going to look to take out uh, Scorpion King's archers there. You can see Lando bringing his archers over as well. So you've got um, TR's archers. 
Macedonian archers and the Roman archers here and there goes that fast moving armoured cavalry general looking to take out Scorpion King's archers there but uh, as I say um, Lando knows that that fast moving armoured cavalry general will outrun those um, heavy cavalry of Scorpion King but look at this old school old fashioned bait tactic okay this is what we call the old fashioned old school bait tactic Lando's being the bait with his general drawing um, Scorpion King's um, cavalry over towards of course the, his allies archers there look. so you've got TR Germanic archers there you've got Lando's archers there as well all elite archers here and Lando used his general as bait to draw um, Scorpion King's cavalry into range of these elite archers you don't see this tactic used very much but many many years ago this was a common tactic and it's nice to see on a modern day battlefield a bit of old school old fashioned bait tactic there can you see can you see the arrows going into scorpion king's cavalry now from these um archers and then you can see that um tr bought his cavalry out there to uh, to guard lando's um, general there but that was a nice bait tactic there a general bait tactic there that uh, you don't see on a modern day battlefield uh, hardly ever now now this is a nice counter cavalry charge by um scorpion king there going after the enemy archers there with that at one cavalry unit he may well even try to take out lando's general there pause again for a second okay so this is a bit alarming now can you see there's more enemy cavalry coming over to this flank okay so you've got macedonian cavalry you've got lando's cavalry and you've got the gothic cavalry coming over there plus all those archers plus you've got the Germanic infantry there as well um, Scorpion King here seeing all these troops coming over here needs to be very careful I think because um, he's just going to be outnumbered here you can see that uh, cavalry general there being harassed by Scorpion King's uh, cavalry in there but once again can you see Lando here going to go into the uh, into the archers there he's probably going to hit that cavalry unit he may well try and bait uh, Scorpion King's cavalry again to try and get them into range. Right, did you see that there? That um, cavalry unit of Scorpion Kings was being hit by enemy archers as well as fighting uh, Lando's uh, armoured cavalry general as well. And so that cavalry unit is now routed. You see that? This is, uh, as I say, what you're seeing here is old school tactics that was being used 16, 17, 18 years ago on the 2023 battlefield here. Now what Lando would like to do, of course, is chase that cavalry unit off the battlefield. That's what he would like to do there so it won't rally. But um, you can see Scorpion King bringing his cavalry over there as well. And just to show you now, you'll see that Scorpion King is moving his infantry as well. Now, I think he's going to move his infantry onto that right flank to help guard his archers, possibly, there. And also, he may well be looking to try and take out Lando's armoured cavalry general. But here, you can see there's a heck of a lot of enemy troops there on our right flank. So, as I say, Scorpion King needs to be very careful. I know he's very aggressive and attacking, but I think he needs to be careful. As I say here, the two Macedonian armies of Spitfire and Mars have kind of merged there into a mass of pikes. And uh, what I'd like to do is get close to them so I can throw a lot of pilers in there to do a lot of damage. Now, remember that um, Macedonian pikes have got three extra de defense points more than the Seleucids. So Barclay Man doesn't really want to get into a pike fight with the uh, Macedonians because before because um, before any upgrades are put on the pike units, Macedon, as I say, have got three extra defense points. Um, there you can see the Seleucid archers there. Of course, they're only medium range, and of course Barclay Man would like to get them in range of the Macedonians there. But as I say here, those twenty units of Sacred Band spearmen. Uh, Mad Kings bought them deliberately to try and counter those Macedonian pikes there. The massed pikes of Spitfire and Mars. But as I say here, you'll see Scorpion King taking his infantry over to that right flank. As I say, they would like to um, take out Lando's armoured cavalry general there. And then once again, let you can see Lando being a nuisance with that fast-moving armoured cavalry general. Trying to get um, Scorpion King to chase him again. Can you see that? say there look now he might get caught actually uh, Lando's general might well get caught there which it looks like he has unless he's gonna put no there you are he's been routed bang he's been hit by more cavalry as well probably gonna kill him now 
I bet Lando's general's probably going to get taken out. And that's what my guess is there. There you are. So that's Lando's general's just been taken out. He got a little bit too overconfident maybe with the general. So he's lost his general morale bonus now. Okay, but as I say, you can see that Scorpion King has now got his infantry on this right flank as well. There you can see TR is finishing off the very battle-damaged archer units of Scorpion King. And now you'll see Scorpion King there is moving his cavalry towards the Gothic cavalry. Right, now if you notice here, you'll see that Scorpion King has gone a long way from his allies at this stage. But over here on our left flank there, you'll see Barkyman has put his medium-range archers into range of those Macedonian pikes, trying to cause them a lot of damage there. And you can see Mars moving his um, Macedonian army, looking to come round the flank of my SPQR infantry there. But you can see Mad King spotted that and is moving his um, 20 Sacred Band spearmen over there towards those Macedonians. Right. Can you see that I'm moving my Roman army towards Mars's Macedonians there? And the only reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to throw in loads of pilers into the forward units of Mars' his, uh, pikes there to um, cause them a lot of damage there before Mad King gets engaged. Okay, so that's why I've moved my Roman army over there. Okay, so let's pause the game for a second here. So, as I say, I'm going to look to throw a lot of pilers into there you can see my guys are just in the process of throwing pilers there. there you can see I've already some of my units have already thrown pilers into those Macedonian pikes there. Just look at the number of uh, effective against armor pilers going into those Macedonian forward Macedonian pike units there to weaken them before a mad king gets his sacred band spearmen involved with them there. So that's um that should weaken them a bit. It looks to me like here, um, his cavalry there look like it might have had a slight glitch there and they look a bit spread out, don't they? But he looks like he's moving his cavalry around my flank there to maybe hit into the flank of my uh, my infantry. But meanwhile, over on the right flank here, you'll see Scorpion King being kind of ultra aggressive there as he's moving towards the enemy team. But look at the distance between Mad King and his al uh, sorry, between Scorpion King and his allies there. Just look at the difference there big big difference and look at the enemy troops facing scorpion king now remember scorpion king's only got nine infantry there as well so that is a massive gap between him and his allies there and there is as i say a lot of enemy troops on that flank there and you can see um scorpion king here being as i say ultra aggressive in this battle look at him moving towards the enemy troops there what he'd like to do is hit those enemy berserkers and uh, activate them remember when berserkers are activated they go out of the control of their general and just attack the nearest enemy unit just look at the aggression and attacking um that uh, scorpion king's doing here and he's going to get smashed and crashed if he's not careful like a bang as lando's cavalry smashes into his infantry there oh my gosh just look at all this germanic infantry going to come in on him as well oh my gosh just pause again for a second so tr now has activated all three of his berserkers arguably the most powerful units in the game that's why we only allow three in our games and they've all been activated there. You've got all these Axemen, you've got the Screeching Women, and you've got the Night Raiders all pushing in on Scorpion King's army there. Plus you've got um, the Gothic Cavalry of TR. You've got Lando's Cavalry smashing in to Scorpion King's infantry. Plus you've got Spitfires well upgraded. Remember you've got eight upgrades in those Companion Cavalry with their ten charge bonuses. Plus you've got Lando's infantry coming over as well. If Scorpion King's not careful, he could lose his entire army and therefore our right flank could be smashed, crashed and routed here. Just look at that Gothic cavalry charging in there like, with the Berserkers and all those German infantry like them BANG as they smash in there. Plus, there comes the companion cavalry look and BANG as they smash in there as well. Just look how unfortunately how isolated Scorpion King is from his allies. Just look at the distance there. Oh my gosh, now he's just got a few infantry units left, but just look at how far away he is from his allies. This is what can happen when you you kind of get over-aggressive, you get isolated, and then you get smashed and crashed by the enemy team there. Just look at all that cavalry and infantry coming into Scorpion King's infantry. Look at BANG! As it smashes in there and BANG! As more cavalry and infantry goes in there, 
Now at this stage, Scorpion King's got one. No, he hasn't. He hasn't got, even got a one unit left. Okay, so our right flank has now been smashed, crashed, and broken. Make no mistake about that. Our right flank has now been broken, and that has now freed up all those enemy troops, all those enemy troops, victorious enemy troops that have just broken Scorpion King's army, can now come back and attack us. This has kind of made it like a, a, a 3v4 now. Our team with three armies against their team of four. Oh my gosh. Meanwhile over here you'll see that um, Mad King is now pushing his Sacred Bass Spearmen in against the Macedonians there. I've thrown a lot of my pilots in there to weaken the Macedonian pikemen there. And uh, as I say you can see why um, Mad King bought 20 units of Sacred Bass Spearmen now. And as I say, I've weakened a lot of them with my uh, pilers there from my SBQ or army. But uh, as I say, with our right flank broken, they were that Scorpion King's general just been taken out. As I say, with our right flank broken now, all those victorious uh, troops there with high morale now, because they've just routed that to army of Scorpion Kings, will be coming over to us. So um, it, this is now a 3v4. Make no mistake about this, this is a 3v4. And the victorious enemy troops are starting to move towards us now. So, um, <clears throat> things not looking very good. Maybe it might be a good idea to admit defeat and maybe get a new battle going. I don't know what you guys think there, but they were. And I can see these berserker units, the moment they're activated, they go out of control of their general. Okay, so the Germanic general's got no more control over these berserkers. And these berserkers will now chase the nearest enemy unit. Okay? They would just, just run after the nearest enemy unit. So if Scorpion Kings uh, could rally one of his cavalry units there, he could lead those Berserkers right over the other side of the battlefield there, away from the main battle. And remember, Berserkers are arguably the best and most powerful units in the game. So to draw them away from the main battle would be a really good tactical move there. And as I say, they're completely out of the control of their general now when they go into berserk mode. And as I say, they just chase the nearest enemy unit. So uh, if we could draw those away from the, bat the main battle, that would be good news for us. But as I say, for all intents and purposes, this is now a 3v4, our team being the 3, and of course the enemy uh, being the 4 there. So um, it's going to be... Uh, <coughs> A bit uh, tough, I think, for our team now. There, you can see um, Barkley Man has formed up a pike wall on our right centre there. But uh, as I say there, can you see the berserkers chasing the nearest enemy unit, as I say? So hopefully Scorpion King is going to try and take that those berserkers away. But uh, if the Germanic General attacks that unit of Scorpion King and kills it, then the berserkers then will probably head for um, his allies there. Over there, look uh, towards our um, Seleucid um, ally there. But look at those Macedonian pikes. I mean, that's a massive pike army there. Now, usually, um, I've always thought that Macedon is better in defence. Okay, you you use them to attack sometimes, but really, in general, you'll find most Macedonian generals tend to use them in defence and only will attack at certain times. Okay, now you saw Mars move his Macedonian army forward there straight into the Carthage Sacred Band Spearman. So, um, so I'm not sure whether that's a good move because we know that the Sacred Band Spearman will definitely punch above their weight against these big 121-man Macedonian units there. See how Mad King's taking some of his units around the flank of that Macedonian formation of Mars? Nice tactical move there by um, Mad King. Right, okay, just going to show you something here. So that um, Roman unit that they were chasing, the Berserkers were chasing, that obviously got killed. So they're now coming to the nearest enemy unit, which is good for us because remember that pikes and spears kill barbarian troops, including Berserkers, very quickly. And so these Berserkers are now charging headlong into um, the Seleucid pikes of Barclay Man. So that's good news for us. Now you see, can you see their banners are no longer flashing? So they've gone out of Berserker mode. Okay, now the reason for that is if you notice, can you see they're distraught over the number of enemies plus they're tired? If you look at the look at the reading there, see distraught over the number of enemies and they're tired. So they have now come out of berserk mode, okay? And uh, you can see the rest of the uh, German infantry moving in there, but the berserkers are no longer in berserk mode and could be killed now quite easily by those pikes of the Seleucids. So that's good news for us. 
Meanwhile, here at you'll see Mad King has moved some of his cars, his sacred band uh, units back because he saw Lando's Roman Scipio army coming around uh, and they would love, and of course Lando would love to throw loads of pilers into the Carthage army of Mad King. But here you can see Mad King's units uh, are in a tussle there with the Macedonian units of, I think, Spitfire and uh, Mars there. You can see I'm moving my SBQR army towards Lando's. But over here, look, those berserkers now, look, one of those berserker units has just routed. Now, can you see a line of dead berserkers there? Can you see? And if you notice, they couldn't even get down the pikes to kill the man on the other end, look. They've just been killed on the pikes there. They just couldn't get past those pikes, look. And so all those berserkers there are now dead, um, being killed on pikes. So as I say, all barbarian troops, even berserkers, will die quite quickly on pikes and spears. So it was lucky for us that uh, those berserkers, when they were in berserk mode, just ran for the nearest uh, enemy unit, which was Barclay Man's uh, sacred, uh, sorry, um, his Seleucid pikes there. So that's that's good news for us. And as I say, if you look here, can you see how Barclay Man has set up a pike defence there um, against the Germanic troops that possibly would come in on our right centre there. So well done to Barkley man. Uh, doing really well there with those pikes. Killed those, uh, as I say, berserkers. Arguably the most powerful units in the game. And they've suffered a lot of casualties there. Running into those Seleucid pikes. You can see the enemy moving over to our left flank a bit there. And you'll notice that I'm moving my army. My SBQR army over there. To counter Lando's Scipii army there. Can you see that? So I'm moving over there. I'm going to try and shadow Lando's army there. Hopefully leaving Mad King to concentrate his sacred band units on those Macedonian pikemen. That's what I would like to do there. And uh, as I say, the uh, Macedonian pikes are um, quite susceptible to um, Carthage sacred band spearmen there. Right. Here you can see Barkley Man there. As I say, made a good pike wall there against enemy troops trying to come in on our right center they are running from the field like cowards and turncoats let's say there's a big tussle going on between the Carthage sacred band and the Macedonian pikes there there's a say land it wouldn't surprise me if Lando bought his um Scipio army in behind his Macedonian allies to give them a bit of support it wouldn't surprise me if that's... There you are. Look, can you see he's moving his infantry over there? And that's a good bit of teamwork there by Lando to get in behind his Macedonian allies with his um, Skippy army there. He may well even have some pilers left that he can throw in to the Carthage Sacred Band units there. If you notice there, I've moved my infantry over there as well to, uh, to try and uh, shadow Lando's Roman army. And I believe that the enemy did have a cavalry advantage on us right from the beginning of the battle because, of course, Carthage didn't have um, any cavalry. Whereas all the other, the enemy team, they all had, I think, six cavalry each. So there you are. You can see my SBQR army there um, shadowing the, um, the Roman army of Lando there. Now, if you look, as I say, all the enemy cavalry there, like you've got Lando's cavalry there. They're ready to maybe go around the flank to charge in there. You've got Mars's cavalry there, and you've got Spitfire's cavalry there as well. Plus, you've got the Gothic cavalry of Germania. Okay, so they've got something like maybe 20 cavalry units there, all together, the enemy team. Okay, with all the uh, Macedonian cavalry, the Gothic cavalry, and Lando's Scipio cavalry there. Look at these Germanic cavalry locked and loaded, ready to go in. You can see some of uh, Barclay Man's units have been routed, but they're starting to rally. I think those units will definitely rally, looking at the numbers of them there. Okay, and just to let you know that the only cavalry got left, because of course Scorpion King's cavalry got taken out, are the Seleucid cataphracts there of Barclay Man's. And my SBQR cavalry. That's the only cavalry cavalry that we've got against all these enemy cavalry there. So um, as I say, cavalry-wise, the enemy have definitely got a big advantage there. But with all these pikes and spears involved in fighting, it's going to be difficult for them to take advantage of the cavalry advantage they've got. Um, because, of course, they don't want to run into any pikes or spears, which, of course, are anti-cavalry there. But as I say, that's all the cavalry, cavalry we got there which I think we've got something like 11 cavalry against something like maybe 20 of their cavalry there. But as I say, it is difficult for them to take advantage of their cavalry advantage because of all the pikes and spears that are fighting in this battle. 
you see that gothic cavalry charging in there look, into one of uh, Barkley Man's pike units there look. And bang as it smashes in there they look like they're trying to around uh, break up our right centre there okay so what you're going to see now is an old school old fashioned surge attack now what I used to I used to do these surge attacks maybe 15 16 years ago here now I've just seen that Mars's general's been routed so I know the Macedonians have lost one of their general morale bonuses here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to surge my infantry through my allies Carthage allies there into the Macedonians and even into the Scipio infantry okay so this is an old school old fashioned surge attack will it still be effective in 2023 as I say we were using this back in 2006 2007 will this surge attack um, do what I want it to which would be to route a lot of those Macedonian points meanwhile our right center here look, is in danger of possibly being broken with all these cavalry um, charging in there you can see Barclay man's units have been routed he's charging some of his there he go, he's got some valid pike units there but he looks like he's going to charge his cataphracts in there to try and hold that up but I'm counting on this surge attack here to try and route as many of the enemy troops as I can right can you see my SBQR army surging forward there old school old fashioned surge attack here look at the pressure that my infantry is putting on those um, enemy fighting units there now look can you see that just the pressure of that surge attack has routed loads of those enemy troops there. Can you see loads of those Macedonian troops? And they'll run into those um, Scipio troops behind them and they will lower the morale of those Scipio troops and a lot of those Scipio troops will rout from um, seeing their friends routing right. If you notice there, my SBQR army has done that old school, old fashioned surge attack there into the enemy troops if you notice there you'll see that mad king is up to spears and are running his spears forward with my infantry as well there just to try and um add more weight to that surge attack there as we run forward there but just look at how many enemy troops we've routed and those enemy troops running into their allies behind them would have caused them to rout as well okay so that was that massive old school old fashioned surge attack still works in 2023 that we were using in 2006 2007 oh my gosh old tactics if they work they still work well that's another Macedonian general I think just been killed there but you'll notice here once you get a lot of enemy troops routing okay they will affect other units there now if you look here you'll see see what this cavalry unit of Lando's thinking can you see if you look at their writing unhappy to see friends routing so that means when they're unhappy look their morale drops like a stone and that's why so many of these troops are, like, have mass routed now because as the routing troops ran into fresh troops that were behind them it lowered their morale so much that has caused them to rout as well and if you notice here mad king and myself are still pressing forward there just not to allow them to rally i've got my cavalry locked and loaded ready to throw in if needed be but just look at the dead enemy troops there in that line where we just done that massive surge attack there and as i say barkley man has been doing well in our right center remember our right flank was smashed and crashed but barkley man has been holding our right center well there with his Seleucid pikes there and as I say just look at the mass route that a surge attack can cause um, if you time the surge attack just right and as I say that surge attack is from 2006 2007 and still effective on the 2023 battlefield there so very pleased with that and you see I move my SBQR army now towards what's left of the enemy troops there as I say, they did have a massive cavalry advantage on us, but it was very difficult for them to take advantage of that because there were so many pikes and spears fighting in this battle. And of course, all pikes and spears are anti-cavalry. So here you can see TR now trying to organize his Germanic troops. They're sending cavalry over here to try and attack Mad King, the flank of Mad King's um, army. There you'll see I'm counter-attacking with my SBQ or cavalry look. And bang! As my cavalry smashes in to that enemy cavalry that was attacking Mad King there. As I say, um, good teamwork 
there we look after each other in battle that's how you win team battles by looking after each other notice here that those well upgraded um, Macedonian companion cavalry was smashing into my infantry notice how Barkley man here is going to counter attack them with his cataphracts there to help my infantry out all good teamwork all good battlefield awareness and as I say teamwork is the key to winning team um, battles here as you can see they're helping each other's out they're watching out for each other all the time that's how you win team battles not standing back and letting your friends take um, all the damage and then charging in and getting good kills and um, looking like you've won the day there team battles is all about helping each other out and that's exactly what's happened here. There's just a few Germanic units left now of TRs which were charging our cavalry into. Can you see that? It wouldn't surprise me if TR admitted defeat there. Uh, yeah, I think he's just uh, just done that. Okay, so let's just pause again for a second here. So, let's see. It looks like, um, let's say, our team's managed to go on to win the battle here. Um, and bearing in mind that um, at the beginning of this battle... We lost our right flank, didn't we? Do you remember? Pro Scorpion King got a bit over aggressive, got isolated, and we lost our right flank. Poor Scorpion King's army was smashed, crashed, and broken here. And uh, the enemy there, I should think, were thinking that that was possibly the end of the battle there after they'd taken that out, uh, Scorpion King's army, out and made it a 3v4. But uh, through good teamwork, we managed to turn things around there and. Um, managed to go on to uh, say uh, if you like um, turn things around a little bit there here you can see it's a big lots of cavalry dead there you can see a lot of pike dead there as well in this uh, right center of ours I thought some um, Barclay man did well to hold there and of course here look this is where the Carthage and Macedonian army were fighting for a long time and then my infantry came in and did that old school old-fashioned surge attack straight through the enemy troops there caused a mass rout as well so uh, i'm very pleased to uh, to show you an old school tactic like that from all those years ago that still works on the uh, 2023 battlefield so very pleased about that but as i say here you can see um there are we're just waiting for um the enemy troops to um generals just to admit defeat now pause again for a second here Okay, so if you look over here, that's the last unit of Scorpion King there, just leaving the, exhausted and leaving the battlefield. So as I say, all of Scorpion King's army was taken out here on this right flank. And uh, as I say, probably the enemy team thought, well, you know, we've probably got this game now. And to be honest, when we saw, when we saw Scorpion King get taken out, we probably thought the enemy team has got this game as well. But I think through good teamwork there, I mean, not to not to blow our own trumpets or anything like that, but I think good teamwork there, a good battlefield awareness, good tactical moves there, managed to um, managed to turn things around a little bit there. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game. I thought everybody played well. Uh, well played, guys. And as you can see, it was an average victory. Now, who do you think has got the highest kills in the game? Let's look through which who do you think would have the highest kills in the game? I would think that the person that was fighting Macedon would have the highest kills in the game, Mad King. 1930, only 70 off the magic 2000 kills. So well done to Mad King there with his Carthage army. Good tactical move in bringing 20 sacred band units there against the Macedonian armies of Spitfire and Mars. That's why he's got so many great kills there. So well done to him. Uh, so well done to TR, he did well with his Germanic army, got over a thousand kills with Germania, so well done to TR, very aggressive. Um, unfortunately, as I say, if we get less than a thousand kills, we are a bit disappointed, and poor Orlando's army was involved in that mass rout when we did that surge attack there, so he'll be a bit disappointed with those kills there, but um, he, he did well. Well done to Spitfire with his Macedonians there, he did well, and well done to Mars as well, he got less than a thousand kills, so he'll be a little bit disappointed, but... Uh, really well played guys i thought you all played really well there and um, as i say you nearly won the game there and uh, my kills i got less than a thousand kills so yeah i'm a little bit disappointed i got less than a thousand kills but if you look at how many men i've got left on the battlefield i think i only lost 350 men approximately 350 men is all i lost in that whole battle there 
So um, I'm quite pleased with that. And the old school surge attack is nice to see it still works. Uh, well done to Barkley man there. He did really well at holding our right centre after our right flank was broken. Well done to him. And well done to Scorpion King there. Very aggressive, very attacking, but unfortunately just got a little bit isolated on that right flank. And it's always sad to see, um, you know, your teammate get smashed and crashed there. And as I say, well done to Mad King with his uh, Sacred Band Army there. Great kills for him there. Um, so there you go. And do you think that either team had a faction advantage? I mean, the enemy got Germania... Rome and two Macedonian armies there. I think that's quite a strong combination. We got Rome, Seleucid, Rome and Carthage. So I don't know, do you think there's any faction advantage there for either team? So I just thought this was a great game to show you um, how if you if you get yourself isolated, how you can be taken out. We saw that and we saw the old school surge attack from back in 2006, 2007 there. It was kind of like a bit of a time warp, really. I just say if you enjoy our battles, we play Rome Total War every Friday and Saturday night. It would be really nice to see you if you'd like to join us. And uh, you may well see yourself on one of these YouTube battles if you do. Spark Commander saying bye for now. See you soon.